rest. So one of the stories that was absolutely huge on Friday, and it happened, uh, it broke right after I left here, was that Ben Hueso was one of our state senators, Democrat from San Diego, arrested for driving under the influence. What's interesting about this, because DUIs are unfortunately very common, what's interesting about this is that day he had voted in favor of a bill that rideshare executives say would literally spell the end of the rideshare industry. And if you're wondering, you know, what's ride sharing? It's Lyft, it's Uber, it's Sidecar, you know, the really cool apps where you can watch and you can see the car coming to get you. Well, he voted to pretty much end ride sharing in California. I think he should have Ubered, is what I think. I want to go to John Dady and, and we'll take the, the state of San Diego with John. John, is this... Is this going to cause Ben Hueso trouble in November? Because, you know, a lot of his a lot of his voters, the the very folks who would support a Ben Hueso are people who utilize ride sharing. Certainly not going to help him. Um, this is you know, this is a serious charge and it's never good timing. But especially when it happened, keep in mind the next day, as you said, Friday, it broke. Uh, there was actually you know, the end of session. There was a lot of bills being voted on. And some people say the, this affected the actual outcome of some other bills. So uh, the, the timing literally could not have been worse for uh, either the senator himself or for the public. Now, it is, um, you know, who is he going to be running for, running against? Well, that's, that really goes to the crux of the political analysis on this, and that is clearly this would be da- extremely damaging if he was in a tough race. But there's several factors in play here. Keep in mind that we are now, for the last couple cycles, under the open primary type uh, system. So, number one, he's running against another Democrat. Number two, in the primary, the vote roughly broke down to uh, Ben at 72 percent and his opponent at 28 percent. So that's pretty overwhelming. Right. And then the the other aspect I will say is the famous quote in history that all politics is local. You know, uh, Ben is uh, from the South Bay. They know this guy. Um, now, the fact that it's 70 days out from the election, I don't think that helps him because his opponent clearly will try to make hay out of this. Um, but. Overall, I, I, I see him probably being reelected, depending, you know, the outcome of any uh, uh, criminal charges. Well, I know that when uh, when he left jail, he was talking about proving his innocence, and then later in the day, he um, he he released a letter that was an abject apology for his for his behavior. And I mean, it also came out. Of course, there was a tweet by Lorena Gonzalez that showed Ben and several others of the Latino Caucus with cocktails in hand and looking as though, well, they had been up to. Some Something for quite some time. You, you couldn't you couldn't time how quick Lorena Gonzalez took her post off Twitter. No, I mean, that, but and then didn't want to talk about it. <laughs> but but some, but some people, you know, captured that picture already and sent it to the major outlets of thing. I have a. It's interesting. I will give you a unique take that I had watching Ben come out. Clearly, he was disheveled. Clearly, he was still stunned. There was a lot of reporters here, but I'll tell you what my observation was. Speaking to somebody who was uh, uh, many many years ago in the public sector as a political aide. And uh, remember back in the 80s when uh, Susan Golding's husband, you know, was arrested on charges. And for a year and a half, we had the trial with them going in and out of, you know, the, the federal building. First thing that I noticed is when he walked out, there was no aides there to grab him and direct him towards car. He paced up and down the sidewalk answering reporters' questions. That To me, that was, you know, a fault of staff. I don't know what they were thinking. They knew he was getting out. The reporters knew it. They should have grabbed him and shoved him in the car and said, don't say a word. Uh, let's see. Minimum wage. I think we're going to be talking about this for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as usual, Adana, you're the master of the understatement. Yeah. All, all kidding aside, uh, to walk everybody uh, through what the timeline is, is the gathering signatures right now. It goes before the council. Keep in mind, the council will have the option, as they've had in the past, to stop it right there and to rescind their previous action. So it won't go on the ballot. They're we not going to do that. don't that's going to happen. <laughs> no. So if it goes on the ballot, we're talking about almost two years that we're going to be talking about this and, and that you're going to see the campaign being fought on the air wars. Well, and we're already seeing uh, I'm getting emails from uh, from from the backers of the of the ballot initiative saying, you know, we've got one guy who was followed home. We're already seeing bad behavior. Somebody else stole some petitions. So it is going to be every bit as ugly as we thought it was. And it's 
it's interesting. Both sides are trying to say, you know, right is on my side, saying, you know, oh, we're just trying to do the right thing, and either, oh, they're, they're following us, or, oh, this isn't right. It's, it's just so funny. They're both trying to take the high, high road while playing really hardball politics. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's hard to do that when you've got a machete in your hand. <laughs> All right. Three cities in San Diego County canceling their election. John Dadian with Dadian and Associates here in San Diego. So why? Well, there's a, basically, there's a very little used law that says that if there's only one candidate on the election, um, and you see this mostly smaller cities do this, which is what's happening, uh, that they can cancel election because there's only one candidate. But there's arguments on both sides. One argument is that it saves the city a lot of money and it saves candidates a lot of money because then they don't have to raise money, you know, to get their brochures out. Of right. But on the other side... And here's what the interesting part is all three cities, when the council voted on this, it was a 3-2 vote. So it was very close. <laughs> and, and there's arguments on both sides because some people say it doesn't matter. People should be, have the, road to, the right to voice who they think there should be elected representative, even if they only have one choice. Because technically, you know, let's say 100,000 people can vote, but if only 20,000 vote for that candidate, that sends a message also. So it, it is a little bit of a controversial issue. All right, John Dadian from Dadian Associates and the uh, taking the political temperature here in San Diego. Always good talking to you, man. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, LaDonna. All right. Michael. 